Hello everyone, welcome to Crustacean Plantation. This seemingly simple home that we found in Florida and fell in love with online soon became a home so full of surprises. Having never lived in Florida before, we really knew nothing about the flora, the fauna, and, and kind of what to expect. It was simple enough, a lot of land, which is very unheard of in the Florida Keys, but it would provide us what we where we currently are now living about almost three years later. Um, as you can see, there was, you know, a lot of the landscape and the coloring that you see now was not there until one evening we find this guy. Sitting in the backyard, obviously the dogs alerted me to his presence. I go out there and I'm like, oh my gosh, not only is that a crab, it's a hermit crab. So I, you know, took a picture, documented it, took it away from the dogs, make sure they didn't do anything with it, let him go on his little merry way, and on he went. Uh, we have three dogs at the time, Martha, George, and Jimmy Frank, and little did we know that it was about to become an adventure. About 400 feet behind our house, in the back right corner, sorry, the back left corner of our house, is actually the ocean. Um, you know, everything around our yard is, we basically live on coral rock, there's grass, there's not a lot going on there. I started to find these little teeny tiny snails back around the house and also saw what looked to be coral rock. Now this coral rock is, you can see the fossilization in there that also shows you know, the shells and everything that has to do with the ocean life is literally preserved in the rock itself. This was another thing that we had to get used to. So enter number two. Number two, as you can see, I started marking the shells. And then not much longer after that, my Coast Guard son's like, hey mom, check this out. And there was another little crab. It's like, all right, now we have hermit crabs, we have regular crabs. And then of course, George happens to just grab another crab in his mouth. I realized I was really going to have my hands full because if the crabs and all of their pinchers and the dogs think that they can pick them up and have them in their mouths, that literally was a recipe for disaster. It just was. Enter number three. This is when I really had grabbed a marker. I went around the side of the house, moved the trash cans, and look what I found. Hermit crabs everywhere, and not just any hermit crabs, large hermit crabs and it was unbelievable I just started marking them there's four look at the little hairy legs the little strawberry feet I didn't know what I was in for so there you go here's six it's like oh my gosh you'll see the date on there 42319 it's like okay well maybe if I mark the date and I mark how many there are there's seven at some point, I'll start to see a repeat of some of these guys and maybe help capture as far as how far they're going, what they're doing, have they always lived beside our house, posting these on Facebook to my friends up north in Ohio and in Pennsylvania and Kentucky. They were like, Angela, where in the world did you go? It's like, look at their little hair on their legs. That is the cutest thing ever. But again, you'll see on the date on here, 4-23-2019, that was number eight. Here's number nine, little beady eyes, very dark color, cute hairy legs, and tulip shells. So tulip shells are actually really, they are um, native to our area. And I will say that since this time frame, looking back, uh, I haven't seen a lot of tulip shells since then. This group of guys, whoever they were, and here's 11, they seem to have a monopoly on the, the tulip shells. This was the first time I ever found an empty uh, hermit crab shell. I didn't know what to think of it at the time, so I went ahead and marked it E1, so I can capture the fact that there was nobody living in it whenever I dated it for 2819. A couple other cuties, number 18, 19, they were everywhere, these things. Um, you'll find that this is one of the natives that are along the shoreline. I'll show you more pictures of them here shortly. 
So since there were so many hermit crabs, I decided to go ahead and get some shells. And I know some of you guys are cringing when you see the painted shells in there. At the time, I didn't know anything about hermit crabs. This whole thing was new to me. So I went ahead and set out some new shells to see what I needed to do. And this is again, back around the corner of the house. Um, we are not actually on the canal, but it's kind of hard to see in, in some of these pictures. I have better pictures later, but you'll see some of the rainbow snails that are inside those rocks. You see the brain coral um, rocks that are in there. I mean, all of these things are fossils. They just are. Uh, I think this was one of the first times I ever saw them checking out some of the empty shells. Um, it's really funny whenever I saw this for the first time, I was like, what is he doing? And I don't remember if there was actually somebody in there or if he was just checking out an empty shell for an opportunity to potentially move. Here's number 20, 22. You can imagine my Facebook posts at this time, 23. People are like, oh my gosh, Angela. Oh, here's one of the rainbow shells is what I call them. Um, this is my first clue that the hermit crabs were definitely taking the snail shells from the water area around the corner of the house. 24, they're sitting there hanging out saying, hey dude, 20, that's probably five and 26. And they came in all sizes. This shell in particular has a decent story to it and you'll see it here a couple more times as we're going through the video. I think this is the one. Um, this was also my first indication when I started looking at how broken the shells were that some of them don't hold up so well under pressure. I just, it amazed me. Oh, this is why they were all coming to the side of the house, literally for water. That is the pipe that has the air conditioning dripping along the side of the house. So they would come over here and come to the end of the pipe and they would get their fresh water. Again, a Google search told me that that's what they were doing. Coming in and getting themselves a little drink. So I thought I would be a helper and get a, a flat dish and started doing a lot of research on Facebook to say, all right, what do I need to do with these hermit crabs? They're coming around the side of the house for water. Is there something special I need to do? I had no idea. There's 32. I seriously, you can imagine this crazy lady running around the side of the house with a Sharpie marker going, oh, there's another one, 30, 31, 33. And Brian's like, are you playing with your Hermes again? I'm like, yes, I'm playing with my Hermes again, 34. You start to see, I didn't even notice it, but looking back now, I see where they've been modifying the shell and you can tell these shells have been used over and over and over again. Look at all the tulip shells. Honestly, I haven't seen, looking back now, those tulip shells, I haven't seen any of those guys in a long time. I just haven't. Oh, here's Tick. Look at the dark color of his legs. This guy, I would find him all over the backyard. He wouldn't just stay over on the side where the trash cans were. I would find, because he looks like a giant tick. You'll see him again here in the side. Look at that. It just looks, he was number 37. I would find him everywhere. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? You can't go anywhere. And then again, painted shells. I was like, look, someone finally moved in. Isn't he pretty? Um, I feel bad. I do, guys. I Now I know. Uh, obviously, the painted shells are really frowned upon. Here I am two and a half years later, and I see the painted shells in stores, and I'm like, hermit crabs don't need to have painted shells. That's not natural, but that was number 38. And this was the first time I ever saw a naked one. I didn't understand what was going on. I was like, why is there a hermit crab without a shell and naked? Um, okay. Here's another shell that was, oh, this was number nine that was empty. That's another one that was empty. And look, all of a sudden I'm starting to find dead hermit crabs everywhere. This guy was huge. I just couldn't believe, I mean, he's basically almost the size of my foot. And there's Jimmy Frank tra tracking down number 40. This dog was one of the best rat hunters and 
He adapted and became a hermit crab hunter. It really was the funniest thing you've ever seen. He could find hermit crabs anywhere. So this is a good story here. I work from home. I look over to my left and we live on the second floor. And on my couch is this very large hermit crab. I'm looking around. Again, I work from home, so I'm looking around. I'm like, is this a joke? Did somebody put this hermit crab on here? How in the world did this hermit crab make it to the second story of our home and sitting on my couch? And then I look at the dogs, and there's George. He was none the wiser. He literally was sitting on top of the couch, and this hermit crab was just inches from him. And believe me, I could not just pick this hermit crab off. Oh, no, no. He was hooked on. I actually had to use a spoon from the kitchen to kind of curl it around him to peel him off of the couch. I was like, what in the world did I get myself into moving into this home? But obviously the saga continues. I kept finding them everywhere. No matter what I was doing, anywhere I was going, and I was finding weird scenarios like this. Limbs off empty shells. I didn't know what was going on. I just knew that obviously they were fighting. Obviously there's, you know, something going on between each of them. And it was because there were, there was basically a shell shortage. It was their survival for the fittest. And here's a, a flashback to number one. And so this is the tulip snails that are out there around the side of the house showing you that obviously these are native Again, like I said, to our area. Um, so it's fun to find them, but you're just like, well, some little hermit crab will probably come and take the snail out of there and move in. They'll turn it into their home next. So I just set him down and let him go on his little merry way. Here's a snail. You see the same color of the, the shell that I showed you earlier. I call these rainbow shells. These are obviously different colors and they're fun to find, but these are all snails. So whenever the hermit crabs are born in the waters through here, they will go through and um, pick their poison. Either the rainbow, I call these the little pyramid guys. I find tons of these regular baby hermit crabs in these shells too. So they'll go for the tulips, the rainbow, or the little pyramid guys. Number 33, and again, Look at how modified that shell is. This shell has been around the block for a long time. Um, I didn't realize that until later after doing much research is the, how much they modify them. So probably there was a much larger guy in this shell than what is currently what was currently living in there back in 2019. And you can see... He moved out of that shell. Sorry, I had some of these out of order. Oh, enter more crabs into our lives. Dogs barking in the backyard. I go out there in the evening. I'm like, what is going on? And look at him. Hands raised in the air. Like, how about you, a French man with a sword? And look at this fun gaggle. Someone told me they also like watermelon, so I went ahead and threw some watermelon out there. And some of my favorite guys to find are the teeny tiny guys. When I find them, they're, I will, I'm not, I'm more comfortable holding them. They will obviously sit in your palm. I have had them bite me before, um, but I think what was interesting, and I can't remember who told me this, Mary, I think it was you, that said even some of the guys this size did you tell me that they are maybe already one or two years old? So that was a pretty big surprise. And obviously, just keep finding Hermes left and right. There they go. Just check them out. Well, one afternoon, I heard a ton of commotion. And I have a video here coming up that will show you how much commotion we actually had. Enjoy. <laughs> Hey, you guys. Hey, 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 hey. What do you find? Frank, watch your face. Hold on. Back up. Let me... Oh, my goodness. 
in trees who knew first they were in the trash cans inside my house they're drinking water from the air conditioning and now we have hermit crabs climbing trees why in the world would there be three hermit crabs sitting in a tree let alone would my dogs find them this was the craziest thing in the world I was like is this real life it just didn't seem possible I learned really quickly never to doubt Jimmy Frank. If I saw him standing in the backyard like this, staring off into the distance, he was right. There's something there. You just don't doubt the dog. So with all of the dead hermit crabs I was finding, I decided it was time for me to start. I went ahead and went to Shell World and started buying shells to add to the collections outside. Um, hermit crabs and trees, they obviously take off and, and hide. So I thought, well, I'll start marking them just a little bit differently, just to provide myself with some other type of identifier so I knew the new shells that were being used were different than the old shells. And it didn't take long till all of a sudden I started finding conglomerations like these uh, ordinary snail shells, they will ditch them in a heartbeat. And even later, now when I put out new shells, I will have nothing but a pile of boring old snail shells from here on out. But I love the tiny guys. They are just the super cutest little things I've ever seen in my entire life. And the saga continues. We're now at number 50. I turned the empty snail shells into art, black and white art that is, and moving along. We're finally gonna get to this guy. As you can see from, okay, here we go. As you can see from the shell, I have quite a few different markings on there. Um, I started realizing that I had to notate them a little bit differently. Um, I was actually able to follow how many different hermit crabs kept moving in and out. So you'll see there's different numbers on the shell. It was empty. Uh, there's another date on there. And I realized I can mark the shells all I want, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it goes to that same hermit crab. Uh, here's George with one of his finds. The dogs are always so proud. They're like, here, Angela, here's a hermit crab for you. I'm like, good dogs. And I let them make sure they step back and I do my little photo shoots with them. And again, crazy lady. Jimmy Frank always looks at me like, um, why are you bothering taking pictures of hermit crabs? You've got this pretty nice little Jack Russell sitting right here in front of you. Don't you know that there's a hermit crab right there? Pay attention to me, lady. But if anyone ever saw me running around my backyard taking pictures of hermit crabs all the time, it was definitely an adventure. Oh, here's another type of crab. These are, I think they're called Cuban tree crabs. You can see by the size of the lock, these to the left of the lock, they're just another type of crab that lives around our home. Hence, you can tell where we ended up with the name of our, of our house. Here's Pink Guy. I call him Pink Guy. I used to find him um, in different places all around the yard. Uh, once I found him one time and took some good pictures of him. It's funny, my mom always said that they must know my voice, so they want to sit and hang out with me sometimes, so they stay in the yard. These next few pictures are basically a montage of the continuation of the story. I'm going to let them go through fairly quickly. I do have another story to show you coming up. I was finding them everywhere, a little bit here, a little bit there. I'd always like to use my hand as a form of measurement, or at least my foot, so you can kind of appreciate how big some of them are. Some of them I kind of line up and turn into art, do little photo shoots with them as, they, as I find them and continue moving on from there. Um, but my neighbor across the way, and I, 
have to go back through and take a look at how far away she is. She invited me to join her one day, and she said, Angela, I met her a while back. Um, she said, I've never really paid attention to hermit crabs before until you pointed them out to me. She goes, they are all in my backyard. Do you want to come around and let's see how many they are? And she has two little boys, and it was super cute. As you can see with their little, the bucket right here. She has a, so her yard, the trees are closer to her home, and she has a lot of rocks around her house. And this must have been during the time frame, I think, what was it, April, May, June, July, or so. There's a huge migration going on. And you can actually hear them all through the woods. You can hear them like over by her house and her sons were running around with those little claw crab things and picking them up and putting them in a bucket and picking them up and putting them in a bucket. Um, I thought it was neat that way I find them, you know, kind of scattered all throughout our yard, but to see them in a mass concentration like that, this is one of my most favorite pictures from that whole thing. We had so many hermit crabs in this one bucket and when I zoomed in and I saw the color of all of their legs, the colors of their shells, uh, I actually ended up printing this picture out and it's actually a picture on my wall. Um, I mean, it really epitomizes what crustacean plantation is about, just the massive amounts. So what they did is they actually put little dabs of paint on each of their shells and dumped the bucket out and we let them scatter. And I'm telling you, even now, here we are three years later, it never fails to amaze me whenever I pick up a shell that has a little dab of red paint. I'm like, here you go. Here's one of your guys. Number 65. They were literally everywhere. Martha tended to be someone that was more of a protector of them. When she found them, she was really concerned about me watching them and taking care of them. George, he literally would find a shell or a snail and toss it in the air and I would have to take it away from him or he aggressively bites and attacks them. I mean, here you go, you have 68, 69, 70. Every day, 72, 73 was just another one. You'd find them in the grass, you'd find them in the mulch. Here's 76, you'd find them on the other side of the fence. 80, the dogs were like, what is going on? I can't tell that one, that was 82. They literally were everywhere. Here was a naked guy I found. This is probably one of the first times I gave him an option. And you can see he quickly tucked himself away into the shell. And then here, 84, 85, Martha again, being very protective. Broken shells, 88, 89. I think every day, whenever I would post these things on Facebook, again, here's 89. These guys were everywhere. But the neat thing was to see the shells like this that had the red tip on it. Do you see the ones on the bottom? That's an example. I would call that a carousel. So for carousels, I would take pictures and send them to her and say, hey, I found another one of your guys. In between, I would just go through and find them and pick them up and take pictures and document everything. 96, more new shells to put out. I had no idea how many more I was going to continue finding, but I love the sizes. I love the shapes. I love turning them into pictures of art, finding red carousels everywhere, new shells putting out, empty shells, 98, 99. Angela, where in the world did you move? What did you get yourself into? 100, 101. Their little cute strawberry legs, 102. I know some of you, again, may be cringing because I'm marking them, 104. But this really was the beginning of my journey. And here we are two years later. I think I finally got around to 108, 109. We started doing more landscaping, 110. And I decided I probably had to give up marking the shells, 112. 
think as you can see by that last picture, I had 526 on it, which means I set that shell out around 526. It was a new shell, 114. And these guys are massive. So 526 was the day I put out these shells. Hey, hey, hey. No, leave it, leave it. Really? On the fence? Oh, oh my gosh. Yes, and he is so hooked too. What am I supposed to do with that, you guys? I don't know. He was literally on the fence. Just stuck there. He wasn't going anywhere. I think I did find him later walking around on the ground. So I had to pick up and document him. Show Frank, look, he's fine. Take some more pictures. But he wasn't the only guy on the fence. I found more. They were everywhere. Anywhere I turned, there they were. Some I had little marks. Like I said, once I got past 100, I really kind of stopped marking them so much except for the uh, occasional celebratory shell. Here's 38, the, the tick guy. Martha is so protective of them. George, like I said, he would toss them, but Martha would actually sit there and guard them from George. I called those my lollipop guys in the mulch and the plants. They would sit there and they would hang out together. The open claws, like again, lollipop. More new shells to set out. And you know, I looking at those tulip shells, I again, I haven't seen tulip shells in Shell World in a long time. But their colors were just so pretty. I would find them and I would offer them upgrades, document them, take their picture. Even in trees, I would walk down the stairs in my front and look over to the right, and there they are, in a tree, just right there, sitting there hanging out. More new shells. At this point, I think I probably had already came up with a name, Crustacean Plantation. Um, created my own Facebook page, started sharing a lot of my stories, uh, sharing the pictures, If you were a hermit crab, that's a good spot to be. Right, Beaners? Martha. Up in a tree. But it wasn't just the hermit crabs. It was also the land crabs. They came in a quite a few different colors. There was these blue ones. You'll see some of the, the pinchers are pretty big. It's such a gorgeous color. And boy, the dogs love finding them. The season of the land crabs. Oh my gosh, they were everywhere. The dogs would bark. I would find pieces. Sometimes the hermit, sometimes the land crabs won, sometimes they didn't. And then intermingled with the regular hermit crabs. I love these kind, and it's it's interesting whenever you see um, the domestic kind. You talk about shells that aren't proper for them. They will live in whatever you give them. They're happy for their home. This is probably one of the saddest shells that I found that was abandoned. This was someone's home. I mean, obviously it served them well, but look how worn out it was. I retired this one, it sits by my desk. Tiny crabs, hermit crabs, crabs climbing in trees, crabs fighting over shells, random lizard. They were everywhere. I loved them. I love our little Hermie home. The next guy coming up is actually a really crazy story. Uh, if you can see here, he doesn't look much. It doesn't look like he's overcrowded. You can tell he's definitely too big for his shell. But once I started moving the shell around, you could definitely see that there was something crazy here going on. So like any good little Hermie mom, I took him and I put him in a pot with a couple other options for him to choose from and eventually he did make the switch. You have to wonder how long he actually lived like this in this shell. Was he the one that modified it? He did jump over, and here you can see the actual empty shell that he abandoned. When I find shells like this, I retire them. I have a collection of very worn out shells that will never 
have another owner in them unless something happens to the home. And here he is in his new home. He's happy. He has plenty of room. And he was able to move on from there. Believe me, once I moved, <laughs> once he moved in there, it didn't take him long. And here I go. Bye-bye, little guy. Enjoy your new shell and enjoy your new life. I'm sure he's out there somewhere way happier than where he was before. Babies are my favorite. They're just so tiny. Literally, I would find these hermit crabs all around the home. This guy is stuck on the side of the wall in the concrete. You can see his pinchers just keeping him suspended right there as if he's on the ground. All right, I'm gonna try to go ahead and take him off the house. you've seen crabs, land crabs, small crabs, everything else going on outside, but an iguana in the house, just one more thing to add to the adventure. Okay, good catch. George, just hold on a second. Griffin, 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 what are you doing? Okay, so you got it? This little guy is a filler to introduce this next video. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. First time I'd ever seen anything like that in nature. That type of switch, watching them do, I'd read about it, but I had never actually seen it. And capturing it for the first time, again, lizard, sorry for the interruption here. Just never know what the dogs are gonna find. That was, that was actually pretty neat. And of course, here's pieces of crabs. We love living here, we really do. The dogs keep it fun and busy. I'm always taking pictures, little random photo shoots when I find them. Of course, I think if you were to read this hermit crab's mind, he would wonder what in the world is this crazy lady doing? Pulling all of these pictures together into one album in order to create this, I had over 900 and some pictures for the last two, a little more than two years so far. So to put everything together in one video that I was going to share that was going to be at least an hour long was definitely quite a feat. So many pictures to share, so many things to introduce you to. I had to really pick and choose which ones I was going to share with you. Looking back at these pictures and all of the land crab pictures that I was able to find, I don't know that I've really seen a season like this since 2019. I bragged a lot about what people would see if they came down. But obviously, I mean, they were everywhere. Land crabs were everywhere. In the road, in the front yard. If you're walking to the stairs, they were almost, almost snap at you to bite your feet. Of course, not everyone was successful. Some didn't make it. Some the dogs won, some the, the crabs lost. But either way, there was always fun stuff going on. It really never ended. Hermit crabs in the back, hermit crabs in the front, hermit crabs in the trees, land crabs in the landscape, a few black and white crabs. That's, there's no wonder that we actually named this place Crustacean Plantation. It really was the best name for it. When you go back and you look at everything, posting it all on Facebook, sharing it with you guys across the world and across the country. Uh, we picked up quite a few people that we never knew before. Get ready for a stare down, schnauzer style. Good boy, George, you found him. You got him. Way to go, little girl. The fun wasn't just outside, it was also inside too. Can't make 
this up, folks. I kept hearing this clicking sound down in this area. Probably the most fun thing I'd like to do is just pick up the empty shells. And even though I'll put out new shells, I end up with a large pile of leftover ones. Um, eventually, I'll have small guys come in and use them. George found this guy over here on the corner on the front porch. Hey. Martha. So we will go safely relocate him. Careful. She's very protective. She's keeping them from the edge of the table. Do you like your hermit crabs? Look at her tail. Martha, they'll get you. Martha never listens. Seriously, guys. This is what you were throwing a fit about? Oh, where'd you go? This is a very beautiful place to live. It is a marine sanctuary. The water is absolutely gorgeous and we do everything we can to take full advantage of all its nature and beauty. My husband and I, we go out boating, kayaking. We love our Keys life. This is a picture of us during our first hurricane. Little did we know that the Bahamas, just to the east of us, were completely getting demolished. We didn't find that out until way later. Obviously, Shell World is one of my favorite places to purchase shells. And, of course, never-ending fun iguanas in the house. Just how it was. This was our life. Shells everywhere. King tides. If you've never heard of them before, do some Googling. This literally is where water comes up because the moon is high and it floods in our backyard. Jokingly, in maybe 100 years, I truly will have oceanfront property. Um, so to see the water back here is a bit of a shock. did get away safely. I took care of that. So the hermit crabs found out that I have bird feeders in our backyard. And as you can see here shortly, there's actually one on the tree underneath the bird feeders. They do come in at night and eat the bird seed. I thought that was the neatest thing. You know, they're little scavengers. They'll find anywhere where there's food. Meet Alex. Alex found me on Facebook. He had been following crustacean plantation for a while. He also lives in Florida, not far from the Florida Keys. Uh, asked if he could bring his hermit crabs down for a visit from Palm Beach. Showed up with a container. He takes them out often. I remember one's name is Jumbo, and it escapes me what the other two are made. But he brought them and let them wander around. We did find some wild hermes that were still hanging out in the area. They gave him the the biggest tickle. As you notice in quite a few of the pictures, I try to only hold the small ones. I have been bit before, it drew blood, it wasn't fun, but even the smallest ones can leave some of the biggest bites. Again, more shells that were broken. Here's a painted one as two. So I hear more of them moving around, but these were the only ones that I found all close by. As you can see, for the most part, they really take advantage of the natural snail shells that are here in the area. 
but obviously this is a natural shell as well too. Might as well look fun in there. And then you even saw this little tiny guy walking around. There's another natural shell that's in the area. I'll just put them all back from whence they came. These shells I brought back from Ohio. My grandma passed away and they were in her home and obviously they needed to come back to where they originally came. I cleaned up some of the smaller shells and placed these new ones out here to get a new lease on life. For Christmas in 2019, I actually commissioned um, some Christmas ornaments from Jessica Ann. She's a local artist that does marine life and I believe she did an absolute amazing job. These were our gifts to all of our family and friends that we had back home. She really did an amazing job. We couldn't have asked for a better commission. So George also liked to dig up hermit crabs. Really, George? Just leave them where they need to be. Don't mess with them. So another fun, neat thing I did was a craft with air plants and shells. Their shadows look like little teeny tiny hermit crabs. A land crab with eggs. After a while, of posting pictures on Facebook and establishing the crustacean plantation page, I did start to have a few people reach out to me online and ask me if I would be interested in accepting donations from, you know, shell donations, things that I could put out. Um, some of the local friends here, they would hand me shells saying, you know, hey, I had this one left over in my home. Would you mind sticking this out? A uh, nice lady, of a uh, friend of mine, she was moving and she had a whole collection of shells in a glass jar. And I asked her, I said, Ruth, can I have those? And she was like, absolutely. And then they would meet the perfect hermit crab home. She was, they've been in this container for years. She was like, please let them have a new home. Well, one other person reached out to me online. And you know, like I said, I've heard from different people. Anyone would actually send me shells until one day a box came in the mail. I opened up this box and took a look at everything and I was blown away by this generosity. A um, person had reached out to me on Facebook and asked me if he would mind if I sent him, if he would send me shells. And I said yes and I gave him my address. But when the box actually arrived, I was amazed. Thanks to his generosity and support, I estimate that we put out over 1,000 shells last year alone. Okay, one more video. So explain what I did here. And it's funny, even as I am going through and moving through everything, I thought I just saw one run away. Okay, so here's how everything works out. This is the new group I just dumped. That's part of the new group. This is old. So these are, this is the pile of empties where people of Hermes have come in, changed them out, and this, looks like the leftover pile of 60 bees that have yet to be selected. So that's what I can find over here. Um, and I will come back out later and show you guys how much of a mess they make. I can't believe that guy's sitting in the tree still. That's funny. One of the things that I noticed that they would do after they would choose their new shell from these collections, they would run for the trees. They leave their mess behind, scatter their toys everywhere, and then the next thing I know, would start finding them in cute little places up in the trees like this little guy here. And here, it was almost like playing search a word. All in these trees, you would find all of these little hermit crabs. I would call it sleeping it off the next day. In this next picture, you'll see I have five circles I wish I could pause this to make it bigger for you to look at, but there's actually five hermit crabs in the trees in here. Peekaboo, I see you. Many of my neighbors in our area, um, maybe they've noticed a hermit crab, but they've never really noticed hermit crabs before until I started sharing my stories on Facebook. And now they tell me that they leave out shells too before they go on vacation or anywhere else. Um, 
and they just get the biggest tickle out of seeing hermit crabs come by, go shell shopping, and go on their merry way. Um, sometimes I'll get a, a Facebook message where somebody from a couple streets down will say, hey, does this shell belong to you? I see this R, what does that mean? And I'll tell them, oh, that's a Ruth shell, or oh, that's a, a Christie shell, or another shell that somebody else gave me. I'll just put an initial on there, and that's what helps me identify all of these different shells or a blade shell, um, you know, where I get them and where they came from. And sometimes some of our other neighbors will also mark their shells and like, this one's not mine. Who does this one belong to? And it's interesting to see how far they travel in our neighborhood. This one was an interesting find. Can you imagine finding this empty shell? Can you imagine carrying this empty shell around with you as your home? This now is part of my retired collection that I have here in the house. You'll never believe this next story. Martha, what do you have? Come on, you're not bringing it inside. Can I have it? Listen. Yep. Poor little guy. You cannot. No. Come on. Go inside. Come on. Go. Go inside. No. I'm going to go put him back. <sighs> George brought a stick in. Go on. Go inside. Go on. <sighs> Putting the hermit crab back. Hopefully we don't make this a thing. Good night, everyone. Bad dog, Martha. Hermit crabs belong outside. We commissioned a local artist to make an official sign for us, and my husband put it up and officially named us Crustacean Plantation. After Amy made our first original signs, I went back to her and asked her to help us decorate more of Crustacean Plantation. I love supporting our local artists, and of course, they love the hermit crab stories that we share. These four shells right here represent the largest majority of the baby ones that we have coming in. Obviously our biggest grouping are these standard snail shells. And then of course these little pyramid guys. Obviously these shells are very native here. And the little baby hermit crabs just love them. This guy was totally wearing out his decorative shell. But once given an option, he already made the switch. It doesn't take them long. When you find them in these type of conditions, and you give them an option, they'll move. They really will. They'll take full advantage of having empty shells ready for them. I love the little spiral guys. Say hi, George. Say hi to everyone. Someone was ready to start their new life with their new shell. Searching to find um, the original snails in the snail shells. I think that just tells me that the hermit crabs and the snail population are finding a happy balance. It's just not good whenever the hermit crabs are fighting over new shells. Big guy, a pretty shell. And he's a talker. Look at that. Look at how much the shell has been eaten away. Wow. Sorry. Hi, guy. I see you. Hold on. Let's see if I can get you in a bigger shell, okay? Yes. He never moved. He stayed in his shell, and I eventually set him on his way back out back again. This is a sandbar that's not too far off of our property. It has, you can see all of the natural shells that we are finding on shore, and a lot of the teeny tiny guys that they eventually move into. And of course the tulip shells. I think I had to let that one go because it had a somebody still living in it. The one thing I hope to accomplish about sharing our story is to get the word out there about taking shells whenever you go to the beach or if you go visit somewhere on vacation. I don't know that a lot of people realize that yes, a snail or a conch or another marine life animal may no longer be living in that shell However, as part of a marine sanctuary, there are hermit crabs that live on land that will make use of that shell for their home. 
And I don't know that people look at hermit crabs the same way they do birds, deer, raccoons, possum, any other, other type of wildlife area that maybe lives around them. But living here on the Keys, our hermit crabs are scavengers. They have a job to do and they live for a long time. And if people come in and think, oh, the Florida Keys are just so beautiful. Look at this giant shell I found. Let me take this home and put it on my fireplace mantle. That giant shell could have housed a 20 year hermit crab living in the wild, helping to break down things that exist and occur naturally out there. That's anything that I can help share with our story. That's the one thing. Go to and go on vacation, take the memory, leave the shell. We do have marine schools down here for grades K through eight. I hope one day to be able to have crustacean plantation as part of their uh, marine sciences classes. I have spoken to a couple different people. We're not quite there yet as a plantation, but I think once we have everything all set up, I'd like to see if I can include them, the students in coming and learning about hermit crabs and how they're also part of their everyday life here on the islands. You can imagine my surprise when I find this shell, flip it over and see the word hi written. I will say I think our hermit crab her little friends are slower this year. And what I mean slower is they aren't seem, they do not seem to be as active as they were the last two years. Maybe it's the lack of rain, maybe it's just the season, or it could be because over a thousand hermit crabs last year upgraded to new shells and now they're all down molting, growing, getting ready to come back out again and see what's available to them. I don't know. I will say something's different. This was probably one of the worst cases of a hermit crab with little to no shell. He literally only had a sliver. His whole bottom side was exposed. He had nothing. This poor guy is in a sliver of a shell. Look, his whole back end is exposed. Let's see what he does. I think it's too big for him. Martha, leave him alone. Martha, leave him alone. Look, come here, buddy. Is that too big for you? Martha, leave him alone. Go on. Ah! Leave him alone. Oh, that's a little bit too big. Let me find a pot for him. I know as soon as I step away, he'll, he'll check it out. Yep. Look who changed pants. Hi, buddy. It's a little bit big. Look at, look at this. That's all he lived in, just this. At the end of the whole thing, he did end up switching shells. He was way happier. And I, whenever I did send him on his way, I sent him on his way with a snack. Here's one last example of a discarded shell that was left back in the pile. You just never know what you're gonna find when you walk around here in Crustacean Plantation. I thank you all for spending the last hour with us. Please continue to follow our story on Facebook and on Instagram. And it was a pleasure to join everyone here this weekend at CrabCon 2021. Have a great day.